All right, my fellow wizards, I hear you. I know what you're into. Gold farming? Nah. Pack openings? Please. No, you're into those free mounts, you conniving little fiends. Big, small, weird, wild. That's where you all get your fix. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get more free mounts than ever before, this time through the simple act of farming. Yeah, it's all down to RNG, baby. After this video, you can go farm for hours and hours until your brain feels like it's melting because King's Isle will give you a mount eventually, but in all likelihood, it won't ever be the one you actually wanted. Just as a side note, and a shameless plug, if you're into free mounts in general, you can also check out my video on free mounts that can be fished for in chests. So if you're ever in a mood for a different kind of RNG torture, feel free to pop on over there too. All right. First, let's start with the many mounts you can get from the infamous Skeleton Key bosses. You know, the ones where you join the dungeon from Team Up and then everyone just kind of awkwardly shuffles around and refuses to make eye contact for 10 minutes because no one wants to use their key? Oh, the fun times we have in Wiz. Do you wanna build a snowman? It doesn't have to be a snow- <laughs> Well, once you do get some skeleton keys together, you'll want to check out the following bosses for their sweet mount drops. Starting with the wooden skeleton key bosses is Ra, a boss tucked away in the Crocotopia library. He drops quite a number of mounts including the Crocotopia themed camel, crocagator, and mander palanquin. You know, because saving the manders from eternal slavery from the crocs didn't mean they were actually free, it just meant you became their new master instead. <laughs> But, Ra also drops a number of other mounts as well, including my favorites, known simply as My Little Pony, My Little Pony Moving on, we also have the Spirit of Ignorance, found right next to the entrance to Crab Alley. He drops the purple fairy wings on the rare occasion, and is accessible to wizards even at very low levels, which is great, considering he doesn't really drop anything else useful. Next is the Temple Phantom, which is accessed partway through the Hollow Mountain Dungeon in Kembalong Village, which first becomes available at level 25 in Crocotopia. In order to reach this boss, you need to fight several mobs and solve a puzzle before you'll find his door on the left-hand side in Hamakala's Mausoleum. He has a chance at dropping any one of the blue, gold, and silver Kirins, and also a nifty badge for defeating him that also doubles as a Star Wars reference. So that's fun too, when you inevitably don't get the mounts to drop. <laughs> Up next are the stone key bosses. Let's start with Belash, our elephant friend who shows up multiple times during our spiral adventures just to ruin our day. <coughs> this time he can be found partway through the House of Scales, a dungeon unlocked at level 60 in Upper Zigzag, which can be accessed by using the statue in the Balance School. Belash, like Ra, also drops the Mander Palanquin mount, and actually has a decent drop rate from my experience. I've gotten several mounts from him without even trying to get them, so he might have a higher drop rate than Ra for this particular mount. Second for the stone keys is Captain Hawkins, located behind a door in the waterfront in Zafaria. Sticking with the pirate theme, Hawkins drops a two-person pirate rowboat mount for those of you that always wanted to row a boat on land with your best mate, so get to farming. Here's the plan. In the dead of night, you and I mm -hmm. grab some provisions, hijack one of those uh, longboats, and then we row back to Spain like there's no manana. Third is Ixcax Cursedwing, a boss tucked away in the last chamber of the Black Sun Pyramid in Azteca. Now with this boss, you might have to fight the other boss in the first chamber, Belash, who has come to ruin our day again, before you can reach a sigil, which is a bummer. But his dinosaur-themed mount drops are well worth the effort. Ixcax drops the Ankylosaurs, Triceratops, Feathered Raptor, and T-Rex mounts along with the Arcus Cloud, Crocagator, Goldrod Eagle, and Jeweled Scarab as well. After the stone skeleton key bosses comes a multitude of gold key bosses, each with their own mount drops. Let's start with Omen Streebog, a popular boss farm for gear and mounts alike, which can be found in the River of Frozen Tears in Polaris. He drops a ton of winter-themed mounts, including the Frostwing Tiger, Himalayan Yak, Lufalum Wings, Owl, Snow Ram, White Stag, Winter Treant, and Winter Glide Skates, if you're interested. Second on our list for gold keys is the Aether Elemental, which can be found in the Northeast Arrow Plains near the bridge for higher level wizards. If you can find the patience to farm him, it has the chance of dropping the Aether Cloud Mount for all your hard work. Finally is a fairly new arrival, the Stay Puffed Marshfellow found in the final world of Caramel in the Nibelheim Mines. If you can stand playing hot potato forever, this boss can drop the casual, fancy, and formal gummy bunnies as well as the chocolate mousse, if you're lucky. Can I have them? Thank you. 
Obviously, getting keys for all these different bosses to farm them effectively can be tedious, especially since skeleton keys are rare drops to begin with. I recommend keeping an eye on the skeleton key tab in the team up kiosk to see if you can join other groups, or if you want to farm for keys yourself. I also have a video on all the enemies that drop skeleton keys as another resource. Before I move on, I do want to mention one special boss on this list that doesn't require any keys to access, but drops a fantastic mount for my support wizards out there. Warlord Minnick is the third fight in the Jeweled Slopes instance in Polaris on your way to confront Rasputin. He has the chance of dropping a Mammoth Mini, a mount which gives your wizard a 2% boost to outgoing healing. Now, this boost isn't exactly game-breaking, but if you're trying to min-max your support setup, it might be a great addition to your team. Alright, now we're moving on to the event and seasonal mounts you can farm for. These are obviously time sensitive, so keep an eye on your calendar so you don't miss these when they become available. Beginning with the Spring Festival, which usually happens around March and April each year, is the Storm Rider Hair, a mount released to honor Lady Storm Rider, a prominent member of the Wizard 101 Central Community. During the event, this mount drops from a number of different bosses throughout the spiral and most importantly is level dependent. This means you can only receive it as a drop from the boss appropriate for your level. It will not drop from the other bosses, so be careful. For example, wizards levels 1 through 19 can only get the mount to drop from Lord Nightshade, whereas wizards levels 70 through 79 can only get it from the Mirror Lake dungeon bosses. For a full list of the bosses and appropriate levels, check the link in the description below. But double check you are in fact farming the right boss, or this rabbit will never drop for you. Another event to keep an eye out for is the Lost Pages event, which usually occurs every few months and also has a mount tied to specific bosses based on your wizard's level. The mount for this event is the Bone Dragon mount, a highly coveted mount which can also be obtained from the Dragon's Horde pack, a retired pack that occasionally comes back on sale and costs crowns to open. To farm for the free version, you may need to farm specific bosses ranging from Wizard City to Azteca, depending on your level, so again, make sure to reference the page in the description to find the right boss to farm for your wizard, as it will not drop from the other bosses. However, once you do get it, watch all the other wizards gaze at your amazing mount with awe. Finally, for time-sensitive events is the Five Boxes event, which also occurs throughout different worlds in the spiral. However, the mounts from this event can only be acquired from the higher level dungeon in Avalon, recommended for level 80 and above wizards. If you can access this dungeon, there is a chance that the bosses inside will either drop the purple or orange fairy wings, as well as some decent energy gear too, both of which can be great additions to your wizard. <laughs> Next, let's talk about mounts which can drop from the one-shot dual gauntlets. These duels are available in the crown shop and as drops from certain bosses. For instance, Rattlebones and Unicorn Way will drop the Rattlebones Master Challenge, which you can then access to have a chance at a mount dropping. The duels range in difficulty from Master and Archmage to Exalted, and also drop nice alternatives to Darkmoor gear if you're interested. Each different duel drops a different school whirlwind mounts, which can also be crafted with recipes from Calco's Coppersmith and Aquila. But who wants to craft anyway? Psh. To begin, the Meowiarty Exalted and Archmage duels both have a chance at dropping Ice and Balance Whirlwinds. Rattlebones Master and Exalted duels, on the other hand, can drop the Death and Life Whirlwinds. The Crocopatra Master and Exalted duels may drop the Myth, Fire, and Life Whirlwinds, while finally, the Zeus Exalted duel can drop the Fire, Life, and Storm Whirlwind mounts. If you end up needing help completing these dungeons, you can often find help by asking around the PvP arena, commons, or team-up kiosk, since you can't team up traditionally like you would a normal dungeon with these duels. You must place them in your house and have any friends port to you and enter the sigil that way to start the dungeon, but the rewards are well worth the effort. Finally are the mounts from Gauntlets, which usually cost money to have access to, but can be used for free if you have a friend willing to let you in. Starting with the Doomsday Croc Gauntlet are the Apophises, Satesh's, and Sokar's Crocosphinx's mounts, which can drop from the Cybermanders, a secret set of bosses which can be found through a portal behind a pyramid after completing the first fight of the dungeon. Take note that these mounts are part of various sets which can give you bonus stats depending on how many pieces of gear from the set you have, have equipped. So if you already have some gear from the Croc Pack, you may be able to get an additional stat boost from these mounts. Another mount to farm is the Dragon Wings from the Accursed Plague Gauntlet, which are dropped by Macduff at the end of the dungeon. This mount is also available from the Dragon's Horde pack as a possible drop if you have some crowns to spend, but the wings in the gauntlet are a great free alternative to getting them if you have a friend with the dungeon. You name three, right off the bat! Uh... 
gang's all here. A more recent addition to the available gauntlets is the Great Sky Train Robbery Gauntlet, where the Mosian, Ramblin, and trusty Armadillo mounts have a chance at dropping from N. Bison, the final boss of the dungeon. Just make sure not to drink the snake oil. If you're interested in a bird with two heads instead of one, there's a chance you can get the rock mount from the Sinbad and the Iron Sultan gauntlet. It is a chance at dropping from the secret boss, Metalossus, which can be found by going through a fake wall after the first fight in the dungeon with the Metal Tars. Two other special gauntlets, which can only be run once before expiring, are the Tanglewood Terror and Battle of the Bands gauntlets, each which cost 500 crowns in the crown shop, but have also been given away as KI Live codes and other gifts in the past. If you or a friend has access to these, they will disappear after one run, much like the one-shot duels mentioned earlier, but both have a chance at dropping special mounts if you complete them. The Tanglewood Terror Gauntlet has a chance at dropping the Tanglewood Stalker mount from the final boss, Forrest Grump, while the Battle of the Bands can sometimes drop the White Striped Zyger mount from the boss, Pat Minotaur, as well. If you don't currently have access to these dungeons, it never hurts to ask around the commons or team up kiosks to see if other players might have it and would be willing to run it with you. You can also somewhat easily earn enough crowns to buy both of these gauntlets by doing KI Trivia, where you can earn 100 free crowns daily, so you would have enough within a week to buy either of the gauntlets. Alright my fellow wizards, these are all the farmable free mounts you can get throughout the spiral. Keep in mind, most of these mounts may take many runs to get, so don't be discouraged if you have to farm for a while to get them. Keep at it and eventually they will drop for you. I believe in you. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, please consider liking and subscribing, and as always, I hope to see you out there in the spiral, and happy questing! Well, I don't know what I expected. <laughs>